Hi everybody, you are watching the Royals and today we're gonna discuss Boolean Shapes Operators in Gravit. So to make long story short, Boolean Shape Operator is the only way how you can create complex shapes and paths in Gravit Designer without drawing them. So how we can do that? By selecting several simple shapes and firing up Boolean Shape Operator. So, Boolean shape operators in Gravity Designer, what they have in common? Let's discuss what they have in common using this body illustration. This illustration comprises from the two separate paths. And to unite these paths in one shape, I need to head on this tools panel, it calls tools panel, and go to this merge icon. Or you can use also a shortcut Ctrl M, Command N on your Mac. So I can combine these two paths into one shape at any distance. Even if I have this distance, I can run my merge operator and create a compound path. And notice the first rule of Boolean shape operators, the final product, the final compound shape would have the same color as the rear shape in your layer stack, I mean. So, so the shape at the bottom, in my case this lower body part, defines the color, fill color and also a border color and other attributes of the final shape. So let me uh, show you. If I change the color and then combine them again with the union operator, it creates the same result. And now you can control the appearance of these built-in blocks within the compound shape, because it has all the attributes you need. Fill color, border color, you can apply all the effects and transformation to this compound shape. So, and let me show you one simple trick. If you apply the border to your compound shape, it supplies the both building blocks inside. And if you see that this border in between them separates these two shapes, that means these two shapes do not overlap with each other properly. So you need to push them towards each other Notice that now our border disappeared. Another important part that I just show you that all Boolean shape operators in Gray Designer are live. They are dynamic. What does it mean? That you can dynamically change their final result by arranging the building blocks inside your shape. Cool, right? So if I do something wrong, to this guy. I can simply open the compound shape of my layers panel and do the necessary adjustments. Next operator is the subtract, subtract command. So I have here, I have this eyes and this eyes is basically a group. I'm gonna produce a group, Ctrl G, Command G. I have a mouth also, which basically a half of the circle, it's, it's a shape. And I have this body that I created using the previous Unite operator, in the same manner. So no matter how much shapes you have, subtract boolean shape operator would subtract the forward shapes from the rear one. So in our case, in our case. This compound shape, let me rename it to the human body or cross simply body, is on bottom of our layer stack. When we select all of our shapes, I use shift key to select them at once. And head on to the subtract boolean shape operator and fire up this 
subtract balloon shape operator that ties it now we subtracted the all forward shapes from the rear one let's move on let's go to the uh, intersect difference it's uh, the most complex balloon shape operator now I have an intersect what is particularly interesting with the intersect command it's a complete opposite to the subtract if you have two or more overlapping shapes the place where they interact with each other where they overlap remains intact intersect boolean shape operator produce and saves only the shapes that overlap with each other so the shapes that overlap with each other remains intact in this case if i fire up this operation with this rectangle and human body selected i'm gonna navigate to intersect it gives me this part of the shape so let me go to the uh, to the fill color panel quickly and uh, recolor it to denote the amount of water in the human body the most complex one the most complex to explain is the difference so difference boolean shape operator subtract annihilate shapes where they overlap with each other so overlapping areas of the shape would be subtracted so we have zero here okay so in our case we have a human body shape we have a screen shape we have a lungs shape and we have a bronchi shape four shapes that intersect at max the max amount of intersection is three even number of shapes and odd number of the intersection when you have odd number of intersection one three five seven nine etc in our case this is where the screen intersects with the body or four shapes intersect with each other area of bronchi and notice that they are hollow so odd numbers of intersection gives us hollow result and consequently the even number of intersections gives us gives us intact areas that you see in the area of lungs where screen body and lungs intersected three parts intersected two times and of course the area with no intersection also remains intact in our case it's lower part of the body and its head and the rest of the screen all of them remains intact we are almost done let me show you how we can split our so i have this intersect command and inside i have this compound shape move it apart so to split our compound shape all we need to do is to click on this split icon on top of your document here let me show you or we have a special shortcut for this operation Control shift g basically it's the same that ungroup split and ungroup is the same operation so if you have group or if you have compound pass no matter what you have if you fire up a split you would split the building blocks apart last but not least guys you can convert this compound shape dynamic live compound shape it serves like container for your objects 
to the non-dynamic non-splittable compound path. You can go to the modify path, convert path or fire the shortcut control shift p command shift p on your mark. And now we have this path or compound path which is not splittable and not adjustable at all. I mean not adjustable you can't rearrange the containing path. There is a holistic shape. And why we should do that I'm gonna explain in the next video where we're gonna discuss how to use textures distressing textures in grid so don't miss another video subscribe to my channel give a thumb up and as always guys join gravit tutorials group join gravit user group thank you for watching have a great day